Hello, YouTube. My name is Alan, and it's that time once again. Let's talk metal. It's New Wave of British Heavy Metal Night. Who would have thought that would ever come around on this channel? <laughs> but yes, it's been a few weeks since we did any of the great New Wave of British Heavy Metal stuff. So tonight we'll check out a few songs by a few really cool bands, give folks a chance to hear a little bit about them. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Our first entry tonight is the band Dragster, who made this single in 1981 on the Heavy Metal Records label. And we're going to check out a little bit of the A-side, which is a song called Ambitions. So let's go straight to the tape, skip the first few intro seconds, and get right to the music. Dragster with Ambition. absolutely killing it with the song called ambitions really great song great heavy riff there great driving rhythm section to it really really cool tune very catchy very heavy all at the same time absolute classic from the new wave of british heavy metal uh, dragster sadly never got an offer to follow up after the single they did this one for the heavy metal records label um i forget what number it is Let's see. It is Heavy 4, so the fourth single released on the label. The early singles on the Heavy Metal label always have kind of similar picture sleeves. Usually a pretty simple black and white design on the front. Uh, as you saw during the song, very, you know, sort of just basic information on the back. And more than one of them have these weird tags, you know, for Made in England and, you know, the unusual characters, you know, some things that look like, you know, kind of, you know, a Japanese font, perhaps. Don't know why Heavy Metal Records put that on multiple different singles. Um, makes them kind of unique. You know what you're getting when you see one of them, for sure. But yeah, a real shame the band didn't get a chance to do more than the two songs. The band did stick around for a while. They recorded some more tracks later on in the 1980s. And that stuff eventually got released as an anthology collection called, I think it's called just the very best of Dragster. Uh, not the most original name. But yeah, New Wave of British Heavy Metal revisited the very best of Dragster that came out around 1999. I used to have that on a CDR. It had some decent tracks on it. It also had some kind of mundane tracks on it. Um, wasn't bad overall. It had a pretty long track list, as I recall. Let's go back over here to the mothership and confirm that. So yeah, the collection ran for... Yeah, 19 tracks. Um, and again, most, if not all of it being recorded, it will... It was recordings from the late 80s period, not necessarily, you know, the classic new wave of British heavy metal period. Not a bad collection of material, um, you know, not the best I've ever come across either. They've been featured on, you know, a few different compilations here and there, and rightly so. The track Ambition absolutely smokes. Don't know why they didn't get a chance to do an EP or a full album back in the day, but it just wasn't meant to be, as is the story for so many heavy metal bands. Uh, the new wave of British heavy metal movement was no exception to that rule. All right. Uh, and last note on Dragster, none of the guys really went on to other fame and fortune with other projects. So not much else to report on that end, but they did leave that one killer track on the single, if nothing else. All right. Let's move on to entry number two tonight. This is a group called Deny, uh, misspelled. Because it's the 1980s, if you're going to be a serious heavy metal band, you better misspell your name. 
if you have correct grammar and spelling in the 80s metal scene it's like go listen to winger or something what are you doing with your life so yeah uh denied this never came in a picture sleeve but it's got this kind of you know very easy to spot you know red white and black sleeve with the weird boomerang design on it and it came out in 1980 and we're going to check out a little bit of the track called no way so let's hear what deny sounds like after we get past those first few seconds here we go <laughs> All right, deny cracking little number. Uh, the file there's got a little bit of noise in it, so apologies that it's not the best sounding uh, file for the track. But you get the idea. You know, big, catchy hook to the song, very high energy, nice bouncy number, uh, but kind of strong at the same time. Really cool single, not one that gets mentioned a whole lot. It's relatively hard to find, but it's not one of the real high dollar pieces for new wave of british heavy collectors either it's always been a relatively kind of mid-priced item at best the lack of a picture sleeve eh, we hate to admit it but sometimes little things like that add more to the price of an album than they should some of the new wave of british heavy metal singles that never had a picture sleeve don't command as much of a price as some of the ones that did so anyway what happened to the band deny well, they did demo some other material in the early 80s, and they actually did release a full-length album. Uh, there's a catch to this, though. The album, and let me make sure I get the title right, because it's been a long time since I heard it. It's called Fire From The Sky. came out in 1984, so a little late, but still new wave of British heavy metal period. But it was a cassette-only album. That is a thing that happened in the early and mid 80s sometimes that a band couldn't afford to get a vinyl pressing done but they could run off copies on cassette and so usually with cassettes we think of you know collecting demo tapes from bands but there are some groups that put out cassette only full length albums and denies fire from the sky is an example of one of those uh, it didn't get a reissue until years later, I think it was the early 2000s, right around the turn of the century, it finally got a press from, was it Iron Pages? Again, double checking here so we get things right. Yeah, Iron Pages Records did a CD version in 2002. Uh, so not a lot of ways to check it out. I heard the full length a long time ago. I don't remember being very impressed by it. Uh, there were some songs that were okay, but I seem to remember that it didn't really have like kind of the high energy level that you get on the single. The, the single is quite good. And again, apologies if the sound quality didn't come through very good on the uh, file I had to play there. But cool single, good band. Uh, but yeah, after you know the cassette album failed to take the world by storm and launch them to greater fame and fortune, uh, that was kind of it for Deny. Definitely an overlooked band. Now, they did have a compilation uh, come out in the late 90s. Really haven't seen anything since then. A little surprised this is not a band that's been revisited to get a you know more updated anthology uh, since that's been such a thing for so many other bands. And Deny has enough demo material, the single, the album, you know, you could easily put out, you know, a nice, you know, one or maybe two CD package with a lot of stuff and have, you know, a good complete works of Deny anthology. Maybe it'll happen in the near future. We'll have to wait and see. All right. Our third entry for the night is a band called Black Rose. Now, this is one I don't have any of the original stuff. I uh, just have an anthology 
collection. This one was done on the Hellion Records label several years ago. And we're going to check out a track that was originally on their 1983 EP. And this is a song called Red Light Lady. So let's see what Black Rose does on this track. Black Rose really tearing it up. A bit of a barn burner there with Red Light Lady, originally from a 1983 EP. Don't have the original to show, just the compilation here. Black Rose, uh, let's get the obvious thing out of the way. If these guys weren't big Thin Lizzy fans, I'll eat this jewel case. Uh, the name obviously influenced uh, by the flat classic Thin Lizzy album. This is a band that did have a fair number of tracks released back in the day, but they kind of got scattered across a bunch of different releases. Uh, it's a little bit similar to what happened with Crucifixion. Uh, Black Rose was featured on the Rock Scalibur compilation. They were featured on the Neat uh, Records kind of mini compilation, One Take No Dubs, with a different song. They had a single that had two tracks on it. They did an EP in 83 with three tracks on it. They eventually did get a full-length album out as well. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of Black Rose songs, but they were kind of scattered across a bunch of releases. It's not like they did just one single plus one album. That's you know a reason I was happy to track down this anthology that pulled a lot of the tracks together. Now, this anthology is not perfect uh it is nice because you know it has a ton of tracks on it so you're definitely getting your money's worth in terms of the number of songs uh however this one came out i'm double checking the year here i want to say it was 2005 yeah this one was released in 2005 kind of before the modern wave of really complete nice anthologies was done so there are a couple of sort of minor issues with this one uh, for starters, it doesn't include all the songs from some of the early releases. Uh, for example, I think that 1983 EP, it's only got maybe two of the three songs featured on here. In some cases, it was a matter of, well, that song was released on something else in a slightly different form, and maybe they already had that version on here, and they didn't want to put it back on again. But yeah, it's still kind of weird picking through the track list where you've got you know, you know two out of three songs from this release, and maybe about half the album is featured on here. One flip side to a later single is featured on here. So it's kind of a weird hodgepodge of a track list. There's also really nothing in the way of liner notes in the book, which is something you usually like to get when you have these anthologies. A little history from the band, you know, a few insights into how they got together, what their influences were and stuff like that. 
granted for a lot of these bands those stories always kind of read the same way they heard some judas priest and they heard some black sabbath they heard some Led zeppelin some some guys got together at a pub played in a garage did a few shows made a few records and uh that was it but still it's nice to have that information so uh, there could be a better collection of black rose material put together black rose i'll admit this is a band i have slept on a little bit over the years just due to the fact that their tracks have always been scattered out so that, you know, when I put on something like Excalibur, it's like, okay, that track's not bad. I should maybe follow up. Then you hear, you know, months later, I'll take out one take, no dubs. Like, okay, that track's not bad. I should maybe play some more Black Rose, but you never had really gotten around to it. Not all their songs are quite as forceful as Red Light Lady that I just played a track from. That's definitely one of their more aggressive numbers. But overall, most of their tracks are very solid. They've got a good punchy style. Uh, they fit the new wave of British heavy metal idiom really nicely. By the time you got to the full-length album, uh, which was called, and wait for it, this is 1984, Boys Will Be Boys. Yeah, so right away, there's a couple of warning lights going off here. 84, you're getting a little bit late to getting that first album out. That title definitely sounds like something that's going to be a little more commercial leaning, a little slicker sounding, kind of losing a little bit of the true denim and leather ethos from the early days of the new wave of British heavy metal. Uh, again, I haven't heard the whole album because the whole album's not on the anthology, but... They still have some good songs on the album. It's not like it's, you know, complete sellout, you know, wear, you know, a pastel blazer kind of uh, MTV wannabe thing. <coughs> Jaguar's second album. <coughs> it's not that bad or anything. But yeah, you can tell the band, you know, we're definitely trying to be a little more commercially viable by the time they got the album out. They did another album, too, called Walk It Like You Talk It from 87. And again, that title makes you worried. And I'm double checking, but I don't think there was anything from that album on this compilation. No, there's not any material from that late in here. They did have a full-length album in 2010 and actually a full-length album listed for 2022. So somebody is still uh, keeping the band operating under the Black Rose moniker. Haven't heard any of the more recent stuff. Most folks know by now that I'm not good at keeping up with these bands when they get back together 25 years after the fact. There are some bands that do a really great job with it in general. I don't find most of those projects to be very interesting. You're just not going to recapture the spirit of your youth when you're, you know, have two fifths of the original lineup back together and you're in your fifties trying to write new material because there's a little bit of interest in what you did decades earlier. Wow. That sounded kind of bitchy. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's just not quite usually my jam. Anyway, the old black rose material though is my jam. Good stuff. Don't overlook this band. Uh, if you don't get the Hellions release, you can look for other ways to pick up some of their stuff. There are some more recent compilations, by the way. Uh, there was something done in 2012 and actually two done in 2012. That Let's take a look at those because I have not seen those. Uh, the 2012 looks like it's just another version of the Hellion thing that I already showed. And is this other compilation something different? Um, ah, yes, yes. High Roller, of course. And suspected they would have something to say about the Black Rose material. So there is a collection on the High Roller that you could also check out. Let's look at it real quick and see what they say. Uh, disc one has... Okay... What is this? Again, their catalog is a weird one to get through. So, do, 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 do. see, tracks one through six are taken from their first demo. Seven, nine, ten, and eleven are taken from a second demo. Tracks eight, twelve, and thirteen are taken from the Guardian uh, demo recordings. So, yep, you're getting some early demos. You're getting the track that they put on to Rock Scalibur. Ah, some stuff like that. Um, and I think I just completely lost my place. 
It's late. I'm tired. So, um, but yeah, let's take one more stab at this. What's on the second disc? Does it say? Um, bonus 7-inch EP is just a reissue of the 7-inch from 1982. Okay, so you're getting at least some of the early material there. Not as much of a quantity, it looks like, as you would get on the Hellions collection, but maybe a little bit more complete for some of the early demos and stuff. That's enough about Black Rose for now. But yeah, a cool band. They just never quite made it to the top of my list, but I'm catching up on them and getting into their material here in more recent time. Okay, fourth and last band for the evening is one that a lot of people rank very, very highly, and they do have some good tunes. I want to play one of those to start things off with. We are talking Savage. Uh, I'm going to hear the leadoff track from their album, shown here i do not have a copy of it it's the album is called loose and lethal and that's the track we are going to hear a bit of here if i remember right let's see where i've got this queued up savage 1983 <laughs> So, yeah, Savage really lighting it up there on a track called Let It Loose. It's the leadoff track from their 1983 album, Loose and Lethal, released on Ebony Records. Uh, that song is very, very strong, very powerful. It's a great tune. A lot of people really rant and rave about the Savage album. It's never really been a personal favorite of mine. Um and I admit, it's just a personal hang-up with a name like Savage, an album title like Loose and Lethal, you know, this you know, crazy, you know, really good artwork on the cover. I've always wanted this you know, to just be an absolute ass-kicker of an album. You know, I'm wanting it to be like you know, Jaguar, axe-crazy level material. And the best songs like Let It Loose get close to that. But a lot of the time, Savage seems to kind of rein it in a little bit. It's like they're holding back just a bit. And I, I just always think to myself, I really do want them to let it loose. Just go flat out, 100 miles per hour, proto-speed metal, headbanging hell. And it's like they're always close to that, but they never quite get over the hump for some reason. Um, some good tunes on the album. Not a bad album at all. It suffers maybe just a little bit from the Ebony Records syndrome. Uh, Ebony's always had a reputation for putting out albums and bands that were a little bit interchangeable. Like, there's definitely kind of a sound to Ebony, you know, kind of a very energetic guitar sound, same kind of production on a lot of the albums. Uh, they made some good releases, don't get me wrong. Being on Ebony was not a bad thing. But they were a label that came in a kind of a second wave label. And you know, as such, sometimes they were getting, you know, the bands that hadn't already been picked up by labels like Neat and Heavy Metal Records, uh, you know, and Guardian and some of the others. So it, there can be a samey quality about some of the stuff on Ebony, but some good ones. And maybe, you know, this is just an album I need to spend more time with sometime. Maybe one day it'll fully click in and I'll really get into all the tracks. There are good ones on it. Uh, Let It Loose definitely belongs on any new wave of British heavy metal, sort of you know, high-octane killers kind of track list. 
Savage did other recordings as well. They had a single the year before, which was also on Ebony Records. They did some demos. Uh, the band has actually you know, done some other stuff over the years as well. So again, kind of checking the list here. They had another album called Hyperactive that came out in 1985. If I've heard that one, I just don't have any recollection of it. I probably did hear it at some point, but it's been 20 years ago, and it just didn't make enough of an impression to stick around. Uh, they came back in 95 with an album called Holy Wars, and they've done some stuff since then. There's, let's see, an album in 96, 2000, then a break until 2012, and another one in 2015. And along the way, there's been some compilations there was a box set, it looks like, done in 2015. So uh, there's other collectible Savage material out there if it's a band that you're really into and you want to check them out in more detail. So that's going to do it for tonight. Four cool heavy metal tracks by four different bands that don't really get a lot of attention, but probably should have. And if nothing else tonight, we've given them their moment in the sun. Now let's talk metal in the comments down below. Any of these four catch your fancy? Are you one of those people who loves the Savage album? Or have you never checked it out? Or are you in the minority like me and you just don't feel like the album is you know quite top shelf A-list material? Leave a comment down below and we'll keep talking about this and other random new wave of British heavy metal obscurities. And there'll be more of those to come in a future video. But for now, we're going to wrap this up and get some sleep because it's been a long day. Until next time, everybody take care. And as always, keep banging your head.